Putting together the perfect fall dinner party menu can be a challenge. Do you lean into the creepy before Halloween or is a turkey a necessity all season long? And what does it take to make the perfect fall appetizer? Thankfully, our next guest has the perfect idea. Landy Schweiger is going to show us how to craft the perfect fall crostini that will send all of your guests raving into the night, especially thanks to a creepy twist. <laughs> These are incredible, Landy. Thank you. These are so good. And we kind of put you up to the challenge to make these because you had never done something like this before. No, it was all new. <laughs> before we get started, you're going to walk me through how to make these so that everyone else can learn too. Yes. But what is the difference between a crostini and a bruschetta? So a crostini is an open-faced sandwich and you can literally do anything with it. Um, I like to mix different flavors, kind of like what I do on my charcuterie boards. Um, you pair different textures and flavors with different things and it goes well together. Okay, let's get started. So obviously the first thing we need is the bottom bread yes. part. What kind of bread is this? That is a French baguette, and I just toasted in the oven for a little bit. Yeah, I can tell. Yes. I like that. Okay, so you're going to teach us how to make two of these yes. for sure. So which one do you want to start with? I kind of want to start with, it's a finger, right? It is a finger. <laughs> so each crostini has a base. So our base for the, for the um, finger crostini is going to be our sour cherry jam. What are some things that you keep in mind when you are, you know, adding different types of flavors to things and mixing, whether it's going to be like cream cheese and a spread like this, what do you consider? Um, just kind of what flavors go with what. Like if you have something sour like the sour cherry jam, you're going to want something that has a little bit of a sweeter texture. Um, and our mummy finger is actually made out of a honey goat cheese, so it pairs really well. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Okay, so I have the cherry and rosemary spread on. What is the yes. next step? So then we're going to take our goat cheese, which is in okay. the little container there. I'm going to set this down for this part. Perfect. And you're just going to take it out. All of it? Yep. Okay. And you can kind of, and we're just going to start rolling, kind of like you do Play-Doh. And you start going to just start rolling into your finger shape. And you, it's going to be a lot. So you can kind of mix and mingle. and. So basically just yeah, like a small hot dog shape. Kind of, yeah. Just like that. And then you're just going to stick it right on top when you get the shape that you want. It's a big finger. <laughs> thick finger. Okay. It's a thick finger. That's okay, though. All so right. So you're going to lay it right on top of your jam. Okay. And yeah. then for our fingernail, we actually have almonds. So there's an almond right there for you. And you're just going to kind of stick it right in the top like I did there. And we got the fingernail. Yes, and I always garnish it. Um, usually I do like basil or rosemary, kind of depending on which one. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I'm going to set this one right up there. there. So just the garnish. And you put a little bit more on top, it looks like. Yeah, I did because I wanted to make it look bloody. <laughs> oh my gosh, Creepy, it's so you know? smart. You are so talented. Oh, thank okay, you. Okay, bloody finger. <laughs> we got the first one done. We did. The All next right. one is going to be our crime scene. Oh. <laughs> So you're going to grab another base. Okay. And this one we have our cream cheese spread. So we'll have you spread that on the bottom. And sometimes you were telling me about this before we got started, how you'll add flavor to cream cheese. I do. I usually, um, I like to kind of pair it with different things. So I do a caramelized onion one. Um, I've done like roasted red peppers. It just kind of depends on what kind of crostini I'm going to make. Okay. So once I, is this something you want to put on kind of thick? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep, you usually want to do it pretty thick because the toasted bread kind of absorbs some of the, some of the base. Right. All right, I got that part done. Perfect. So now you're just going to take your jam and you're just going to kind of splatter it. So just take it and kind of like you did your bloody finger. So just like yep. splatter the yep. crime scene. Yes. Okay. And then I have little pomegranate seeds here. Oh, fun. So then you can kind of These are so spread good too. them out. They are good. They're like my favorite. I'm really excited about pomegranate season. So I just spread them out on top. Yep. And then, for our final touch, my favorite part. Yes. The knife. <laughs> the knife. Okay, where did you find these? So I actually found them at Target. <laughs> I was browsing in the Halloween section. Look at this big one. So they are candy. Um, so they're edible too. They are edible. They are. And then you just That's stick it in fun. there. There's the crime scene. Okay. <laughs> and that's it for that one, right? Yeah. So they're actually really simple. Um, you can make them as difficult or as simple as you want. Um, we still have time. Let's, let's try yeah. to get through the next one. Yeah, we sure can. Um, so take crustini. 
And then you're going to have your pesto for a base. You can just use this one. It's fine. Okay. Adding some green into it. So yes. what's the inspiration behind this one? Pesto. I just really, I really like caprese. And so it's kind of like a creepy version of caprese. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So then you still can get like the, the flavor of that, something that you're used to, but yes. making it creepy. Yeah. Okay. So once I have that layered... Perfect. All and the way then around. you are going to put on your roasted tomatoes. So I just kind of layer those on the top of that. And I roast those in the oven um, at 350 with some olive oil and some just different seasonings um, just to kind of get them a little cooked. Just like that? Yep. And then you're going to take your mozzarella. And I actually have a couple that are cut in half. Oh, perfect. And then it looks like you just used two of them right in the center. Yep. And we can just take these olives. Perfect. And then you just took the green olives. Yes. And then put and them on top. Off. Yep. And I made little eyes out of them. So if you can see that. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Yeah. Such a different variety. So many flavors. I'm going to add this one up here as well. Perfect. You did a good job. I cannot believe you did this. This is insane. So this is kind of a cool way to do kind of like a charcuterie board without just having a bunch of random things yeah. scattered. Yeah, I like to add them. I have a lot of people that add these onto parties and stuff so that they're more of a hefty appetizer to go with, mm -hmm. you know, your meat and cheese. Give it a little substance. And how long can they sit out? So I usually, I would say a couple hours is fine. Um... But I usually have, like, I tell people, eat them the same day. Otherwise, they right. get really weird. Like, don't, Yeah, so don't, don't try to put it in the fridge and save it for the next day. No, I mean, if you're eating it for yourself, whatever. But yeah. don't serve it the next day. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you so much for coming in yeah. and teaching us how to make this a creepy fall appetizer. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.